Today we will hear members' statements by the honourable members for the districts of Exploits, Windsor Lake, Grand Falls, Windsor Buckins, uh, Lake Melville and Harbour, Maine. Uh, the honourable member for Exploits. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on Saturday, March 7th, I had the opportunity to attend the retirement party of Gerald Ellis after 38 years of service with the Bishop's Falls Volunteer Fire Department. Mr. Speaker, commitment from these volunteers is important 24 hours a day. These firefighters attend many emergencies such as house fires, forest fires, accidents, etc. The department also partners with other community groups for fundraisers and awareness. Mr. Ellis was an excellent member of the fire department who has given his time and dedication. This certainly is recognized by his fellow firefighters. Mr. Speaker, I ask all members of this House of Assembly to join me in congratulating Mr. Gerald Ellis on his retirement from the Bishop's Falls Fire Department and thank him for his service. The Honourable the Member for Windsor Lake. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Miles Murray has been an advocate for the deaf community in Newfoundland and Labrador for decades. He was one of the first deaf students from the province to study at Glodet University for the Deaf in Washington, D.C. In 2005, he established, coordinated, and instructed the first literacy program for deaf adults in St. John's. Mr. Murray Murphy provides an essential connection between the deaf community and the healthcare system in Newfoundland, Labrador, and recently <coughs> collaborated with Memorial University School of Medicine on two groundbreaking research studies. One focused on palliative care for deaf people, the other explored how deaf people express physical pain. Mr. Murphy is heavily involved with local and national disability organizations, including the Provincial Advisory Council for the Inclusion of Persons with Disabilities and Advisory Councils on Inclusion and Accessibility. He received the Queen's Golden Jubilee Medal, the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal, Newfoundland Labrador Association of Deaf Leadership Award, and Award of Merit from the Canadian Association of Deaf and, and National Award from the Council of Canadians with Disabilities. Thank you. The Honourable the Member for Grand Falls, Windsor Buckins. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise to recognize a group that is near and dear to my heart, the Exploits Hurricanes. Recognize all of the athletes and coaches from my district, but one group has definitely stood out this year, the Exploits Hurricanes curling team. Last year, the team won at the Newfoundland Labrador Games held in Grand Falls, Windsor, a weekend filled with fun and competition. After winning the gold there, the Exploits, Cur the Exploits Curling team practiced every week above and beyond their regular time at the curling club. They did so with pride and excitement. On February 23rd, the team received the most amazing jackets from Curling NL, a surprise that gave them the confidence and put them in a winning frame of mind. On February 24th, the team attended the opening ceremonies at the National Games at Thunder Bay, Ontario. The team was so pumped and ready to get going, their hard work earned them a Special Olympics national gold medal performance and memories for a lifetime. On February 29, 2020, my good friends from Team Newfoundland and Labrador, Tony Kritzes, Margaret McNeil, Kimberly O'Neill, Gary Wicks, Skip Joshua Gardner, along with their coaches, Sarah Pinson and Joe Tremblett, were presented with the gold medals. I ask members to join me today to congratulate these hometown heroes as they rock this country like a hurricane. Go, guys. The Honourable the Member for Lake Melville. Mr. <coughs> Speaker, as our province recently recognized International Women's Day, and yesterday our legislature stood up to violence against women and children through the Moosehide campaign, I am therefore proud to pay tribute to Jean Crane, an Indigenous elder who has led the charge for equality and respect for women in Labrador. Over 40 years ago, Jean helped establish the Mokami Status of Women Council, an organization that supports women through advocacy and frontline services. In 1985, she was instrumental in the creation of Libra House, a shelter protecting women and children from abusive situations. Prior to its operation, Jean would often provide a home to those fleeing abuse. 
She faced everything from anger to loaded weapons to support women. Last January, she addressed the speakers of Canada and provided the opening prayer at the presiding officers' conference in Lake Melville. Jean has served on Memorial University's Board of Regents and other committees to lobby for women or counsel others dealing with addictions through healing circles. I would ask this House of Assembly to thank Jean Crane for always having her door open to anyone in need and, as she turns 91 today, wish her a very happy birthday. Honourable the member for Harbour, Maine. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Angel Fund is a registered charity comprised of a small group of women from Conception Bay North and led by Elizabeth Pilgrim of Cupids in the District of Harbour, Maine. These women come from varied professions and are social workers, nurses, accountants, <coughs> and business owners, each volunteering their time and experience to raise funds to help breast cancer patients. Breast cancer diagnosis and its treatment brings significant financial strain. The Angel Fund assists with expenses as it relates to transportation, medication, childcare, wigs, prosthetics, nutritional supplements, grocery food, gift certificates, and accommodations. The charity serves over 45 communities in the Conception Bay North area, including many communities in the District of Harbour, Maine, from Marysvale to North River. The Angel Fund has organized many social events, such as fashion shows, Mother's Day teas, musical concerts, charitable runs, and other fundraising events, raising approximately $325,000 and helping over 300 women since its beginning, beginnings in 2009. The fund is committed to providing social and emotional support for patients and lovingly remembering those who have been lost. These women are to be commended for the invaluable service they provide to those diagnosed with breast cancer in their time of need and the support they provide to their patients. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.